Hello, everyone. My name is Tara James Taylor. I lead the Global Beauty Vertical for Nielsen IQ. And welcome to the next installment of NIQ's Founder Series. This episode, we will drive into many facets of launching a beauty brand, from perfecting the formulation to ingredients to securing a meeting with retailers and ultimately getting on shelf and to scale. Each episode I host will shine a light on the challenges and successes of a startup beauty brand in an ever-growing and complex industry. So today, I am very proud to share the story of one of our beauty trailblazers. Our beauty trailblazer program supports emerging minority-owned brands to help them elevate their business models. They will have access to NIQ tools, data, as well as experts, speakers, mentors from within NIQ, as well as external industry partners. Our goal is to support minority-owned businesses and expedite their journey to growth. So let's get started. Joining me today to share her story is Heather Roberts, founder of Mom Bomb. I'm so excited to, to talk about your products today, Heather. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Tara. This is so exciting. Um, so, so if you would, if you could share everybody, I see some of the products behind you um, and I love the name, so we can talk about that in a minute. Um, tell everybody a little bit about who you are and the origin of your brand story. Okay. Uh, so my name is Heather Roberts and um, I have been an entrepreneur, as my husband likes to say, since the day I was born. He says, I slapped the doctor instead of the other way around. Um, and I <laughs> I have um, had many companies, but in the year 2017, I was riding life high um, with my two companies. Everything was going great. And I got very sick and ended up in bed for the next 10 months. And as a mother of six children, I realized very quickly that when the mother goes down, the whole family goes down. We are responsible for holding the energy for the entire family. When we're in a bad mood, everybody feels it. And there were things that I couldn't do that I took for granted. So things like making meals for my family, I couldn't get out of bed to do that. I couldn't do laundry. I couldn't do the housework. I couldn't do anything. And it was very, very frustrating. And I felt as though that there was a need for help for people in the middle like me. I wasn't indigent enough to get government assistance, but I wasn't wealthy enough to help to hire help that I really needed. And mm. so through this process, I realized that there is a gap in the market um, for companies that actually do things for their customers beyond selling them a product. There's an opportunity for us to take care of each other yeah. in a holistic way. And that is the genesis of mom bomb. So I was sick. I was trying to get better. I was making bath products because I'm somewhat type A and couldn't just sit around and do nothing. And I created a CBD bath bomb that we now have a patent for. And um, people wanted to buy these things. And I thought, well, I can't take this money for myself. I want to take it and help other people. And so I amazing. believe, that, yeah, that's it. <laughs> No, I, I think it's absolutely amazing. I, you know, I, I think it's, it's, it all ties well, right? Because your products are so good for for people, which right now everybody needs stress relief, right? Like 46% of our consumers are saying they're focused on wellness. Everyone has like high anxiety and stress over various things. And to your point, like, you know, your brand does two things, right? It helps the, the person and the human, but then also you give back. Um, so I'd love for you to share a story about that. Tell me a little bit about how your, your products, the nonprofit side of your business. Could you share? I, I know sometimes you can't share names because those are confidential and some pub, there are some public stories, but if you don't mind, like I, I, do you want to talk about the products, but let's start there since, since you have started your story journey. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's the reason the, the product exists is to reverse engineer philanthropy because, you know, I wanted to help people, but I didn't want to have to go to all my friends and family every quarter and have a fundraiser and, you know, bilk them all the time. I thought if I could create something that would be the funder, that would really work. So one, there are two women that we help that are just, I always think about them because they really keep me going. One of them was a woman who her husband, they had a problem with the domestic violence issue and he was out of the house and she now had to take on more hours and she couldn't, she didn't have time to make meals for her family. So she said, I really need meal delivery. I said, no problem. We'll set up HelloFresh to come. And she said, okay, but do you think that I could do that in a toaster oven? And I said, what are you talking about? You have three kids. Wow. She said, yeah, I just don't have an oven. And I was like, okay, well, we're going to get you an oven too. So we ended up, Home Depot actually helped us get the oven. They installed it for free. And it was just magical because like, you know, you can't leave somebody without an oven for goodness sakes. That was one. And then we had another woman who she had a toddler, but she was also pregnant and she had preeclampsia, but her laundry was on the second floor. So she couldn't, because of this heart condition, 
And she couldn't go up and down the thing. She had a thousand pounds of laundry. Just imagine that for a minute, a thousand pounds of laundry. So it took a week, but we paid somebody to come in and launder it all for her. So she brought that baby home to a beautiful, clean home with all fresh laundry. So those are just two of the stories, but like our goal is to help a million families. So, you know, I hope to have many more. That's absolutely incredible. And I I love the personal touch to it because you really know who you're giving back to and, and how they're impacted and their families are impacted, right? It's a real personal story. Um, so tell me, and I see some of your products. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, yeah, I was just going to say that's, that's it. It's like when you buy a mom bomb product, right? I can tell you what mom this helped. It's not like other companies where they say, well, we're helping a general part of society that is afflicted by one particular thing. And then you never really know you trust that the company does the right thing, but you never really know. That's not, that's not who we are. It's completely transparent. And I, I feel like that is the only way that we can really, build a brand with transparency and authenticity. Absolutely. And tell me a little bit about, obviously the mom bomb, like it's a fantastic name. And as a mom, I love that. I was sharing my kids and they were giggling about it. Um, Tell me about the ingredients in your products because I know they're they're very specific and and very clean. They are. So um, when we started, it wasn't all clean, but then I realized very quickly through going through the process of getting sick, how important it was to make sure you had non-toxic ingredients soaking in your skin. And it was surprising to me when I started to do the formulations, how much junk there is in the stuff that we sit in all the time. So uh, we don't use any artificial fragrance because those can be endocrine disruptors. I don't know if anybody knows that, but you know, even having some of the candles burning in your house are not great for your hormones anymore. So we took out all artificial scents. Um, as far as coloring goes, we used to use FD and C, which, you know, in the seventies, when we were little, that was fine. We could roll around in that, but it turns out not so good for your skin. So we use all different kinds of natural colorants. So from clays to mica, what, you know, just anything that we can get away from that. Um, and then the rest of it is really just all natural ingredients that you would see in any other bath product. So yeah. that's fantastic. And so, and what about the retail story? So how did you, you make, you make the product. How do you then you, you bring it to market and get in reach? Because you're in some pretty large retailers, right? You're in Kroger, Rite Aid, the paper store. How did you yeah. start there? What, what retailer did you start with? Well, I think I'm trying to think. Our first really big retailer was a local um, regional supermarket. Uh, we're in Massachusetts called Big Y, and they have 70 stores. And they really, this is a very special supermarket chain because they do a lot with sourcing local. So they were very interested in partnering with us in the first place. And they actually really helped us grow. They gave us feedback and they said, here, you know, work with the distributor. They'll help you get into other stores. Um, And then it blind ambition, right? You don't know what you don't know. So I just did what I thought I should do, which is pick up the phone and start calling people and and harassing them until they talk to me. And that's (laughs) really, it's that simple. But I do have to tell you, I was shooting in the dark until I had access to Nielsen data because that it completely changed my business and my life. Because Promise, now, I didn't tell you to say that. So that's a great <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, it has been a game changer. Like I have more opportunity now because of what I've been able to glean from the data that you guys have given me access to that I can grow my company by like 400% from before I had this data. It is unbelievable. I'm so mad at myself for being in business for this long without having it because I literally was like, I was making things up. I mean, really, like, <laughs> this seems like a nice scent, but now I know what people really want. Imagine how that could change a business. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It Thank really you. is. And I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I think that's a, it's a great example of how it can help. And, you know, it, you want it to be able to help without it being data paralysis. So I'm glad that you found that balance. Um, what about challenges? Were there any like big challenges, you know, like anything, you created something and it blew up any story there for <laughs> so many, so many, I think I'm, um, the biggest character building of this whole, the yeah. character building opportunity of this whole thing was when I first started, because I had never been in consumer products before, again, you don't know what you don't know. So everybody says to you, you know, well, this is a great idea. You have to go out and you have to get funding. So, okay. I spent like a year going around talking to VCs and talking to people that could invest. And I think I got laughed out of every room that I went into because the second I said, well, we give all of our profits away because that's how you actually build a company, right? You take care of people. That's not in line uh, with people who have to report to shareholders versus consumers. And so I was like, what, what is it me? Like I, for a long time, I was like, maybe I'm doing something wrong. But, but as soon as I got out of that ecosystem and realized that I just need to get to work, everybody gets it. 
The buyers love it. The consumers love it. I, I, it's funny. We were looking at our um, Google Analytics today because we were trying to figure out how to better market to direct to consumer. And our number one search term is mom bomb. So people are looking for us, which is crazy to me that they even know who we are. So I feel yeah. like always look internally, like for any other founder that's watching this, no matter what anybody tells you, go with what's internal. Don't listen to everybody else, because if they knew they'd be doing it, you yeah. wouldn't be doing it. They'd be doing it. I think that's I think that's great. I mean, going with the, going from the gut. And I also think, you know, a lot of these founder conversations, like they're solving a problem, right? They're solving a need state. You are solving a need for you. Um, and then obviously with your nonprofit, you're, you're solving somebody else's challenges with with their own personal growth. So it's it's really an excellent story. Um, any other advice that you'd have for founders as you've like, you know, been creating these products, launching, um, you know, I know I'm sure it could be stressful, you know, I'm so, first of all, I'm so glad that your health has gotten better as well. I feel like the whole, it's, it's been a wonderful story as a turnaround as well for you. Well, and uh, yeah. And to like show my children, right. Yeah. Because they remember their mom who they didn't know what was going on and what was going to happen to me. And then to show them that we can turn around and take this to help other people has been like magical. My kids have been all involved. It's been really fun. But for founders, this is what I would say is that your what you start out with is never what you end up with. So if if as long as you believe in what you're doing, reiterate, keep going back to the drawing board, keep improving. It's it's going to evolve over time and that doesn't mean that you failed at all. It means that you're getting smarter and you're you're able to better address your consumers' needs. So don't get so attached to the first thing that you do because to be honest with you, I started with one product. I had one product. It was a box of bath bombs. And I learned very quickly that if I didn't have more than one product, we weren't going to be in business very long. So that really? was news to me, you know? Yeah. So that's great. I, I think that's great advice. And I agree with you. I think it's it's something that we all live with with any idea that we have, right? Even like holding on to something when you're planning a vacation, sometimes you have like, you know, in your head what it's going to be like, and then you start getting down the road and you're like, all right, let me adjust. But I think it's, oh. it's phenomenal. And to, you know, to your point, like you have to continue to re, you know, rethink and reinvent what you're doing. Like right now, I think, tell me a little bit about like the, the next idea. I think you mentioned CBD a bit and where you're exploring with that. Yeah. So we, um, so we have this, it's patented and trademarked. It's called the Calm Bomb. And we're just, <laughs> I can't with my puns. Um, <laughs> mom Bomb, Calm Bomb. Um, but, um, and so we're rolling that up, but there's something, and um, you're going to edit this. So edit it out if you don't think it's appropriate. But I learned something <laughs> from Nielsen. So this may be good or not. But what I learned was that my biggest competitor with bath salts is owned by a parfumery. It's Parfums de Cur. Well, that's all artificial fragrance that they are trying to push in their salts. Well, guess what? I can make a better for you brand. And now I just stole market share from the biggest company in the world for what they do. So that's kind of on my product roadmap because it's so easy. I'm just going to take it all from them. So we'll see how it goes. So know. another lesson is also being aggressive and, and making sure you're differentiating, right? Well, that's it, right? We're better or improving because there's a lot of companies that just do the same old, same old because they haven't felt the pressure yet to have to compete. But when hungry new entrepreneurs that know what consumer wants and are closer to the ground start creating things, they're going to get wise really quick. And it might be too late if they're not paying attention. So, Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's great advice too for an established brand without a doubt. Um, okay. So I, I, I love to ask this of our, our founders. Um, what is your current favorite beauty personal care product that you're using today? Okay. So if I told you... If I told you that I, if I put on a bra once a week, like it's a big deal for me. So I never wear makeup. Like I put lipstick on. It's from 1992. I think it's Revlon from 1992. Like I, I the only products I use are mom bomb and like shampoo. Um, so I'm going to go with mom bomb because I love my products <laughs> and I go. use them all the time. So there you go. <laughs> I'm giving myself a plug. Perfect. Um, anything else that you want to share today? Just how grateful I am to be a part of this program. This has been life changing for me. I, I'm telling you, it's like working with a blindfold on and now I see the light. It is magical. And I'm so grateful to you guys. You have no idea. So thank you. Oh, thank you. It's, this is, it is a, it's truly a rewarding program and we're so happy to be a part of it. It's really inspiring. Like every time we have these discussions, I'm always like, Oh, like, it just inspires us to be better and to grow together. So um, so thank you for being a part of it. It's been an amazing story for you to tell, something that our viewers will absolutely love. Um, so thank you, Heather, so much. Thank you, Tara. So this has been another episode of our NIQ Founder Series. 
where we deep dive with some of the most innovative brands and founders to unpack how brands launch and grow in the CPG space. This video is brought to you by NIQ, where we're revolutionizing the CPG industry and democratizing data and analytics for emerging brands. So to learn more, check out NIQ.com forward slash Byzer, B-Y-Z-Z-E-R. And for all of you beauty enthusiasts, ensure you check out our beauty hub for the latest trends, sign up for our newsletter. You can also click the QR code to join Beauty Inner Circle. That'll provide you unlimited access to all of our beauty thought leadership content, events, and a private LinkedIn community where you can chat with your colleagues as well as NIQ consultants for advice. So thank you for joining us today and stay well.